All right, guys, so quick little PSA before the uh, best of seven series and before we get into the actual battle. I noticed that some of you guys uh, left comments saying that, oh, I'm throwing the battles or, oh, I'm just doing this on purpose to get more episodes when I'm really not. Um, if you look back at the battles, the two battles that I lost against Harris, he definitely had a uh, team matchup in. And the RU battle, he had a nice Dragon Core, which was the previous battle, which was still a good game, I think. Uh, the game before that, he did have a team matchup as well because of Double Dance Groudon. Then the first three battles that we had, uh, battles two and three, I had team matchup in. The first battle, I think, was the one matchup where we had even team matchup. Like, he had the good amount of threats, I had a good amount of threats. And it was it just really came down to, I guess, skill in that aspect. But you get what I'm trying to say. I'm not throwing these battles, guys. Just got really bad team matchup these two games. But this battle is pretty good. Really good team matchup for both of us. So, should be a pretty solid game. So, let's get it started. Yeah, Basel YouTube, six foot hacks here. Have for you guys today, game number six of the best of seven series with my boy Harris. It's awesome. Now, I did put all the previous battles into a playlist. A link to that playlist will be down below if you guys are going to go check out the previous matches. Now, we did unfortunately take another loss in the previous game. Luckily, though, this matchup, the team matchup, is pretty evenly based. It's good in our favor, and it's also good in Harris's favor. For example, we both have Togekiss, which can destroy each other's squads depending on how things go. Nido King absolutely wrecks him. Unfortunately, though, Sharpedo absolutely wrecks me late game potentially, so I really have to watch out for that. Also, depending on both of our Cabalion sets, they could sweep either one of us, so that's also pretty cool going into this matchup. So I really felt that we had an even team matchup in this game, as he's going to be leading off with his Entei, and I am, I don't know, Know why I said it like that. I am going to be leading off with my Nido King. Now, if I was Scarfed, this would be pretty nice because I could just outspeed him here and surprise KO him. Unfortunately, though, I am not Scarfed, and even though Entei is most likely adamant, it does still outspeed Timid Max Speed Nido King. Now, I'm going to be forced to switch out here into my bulky Starmie, which luckily is not going to get to a KO'd. And even if he had burned me, he wouldn't have to a KO'd me either way. So, I still would have been able to recover off all the damage, which I do end up going for the recover anyways because Starmie is literally the only thing that I have to switch into that Entei. As he does switch directly into his Decidueye, just on the off chance that I maybe did go for the Scald. Not to mention that I really can't do anything to this Decidueye, so I am going to be forced to switch out here as I do switch directly into my Togekiss. He, oddly enough, goes straight for his Zemu, which I was not expecting at all. And of course, it does turn out to be the uh, Sinister Arrow? What's it called? The Sinister Arrow Raid, yeah. So, this is actually a little bit scary. Just because if he does knock me out here, this is going to be really, really bad for me. Because like I said, Togekiss does really come in handy in this matchup. Thankfully though, I am able to live on about... 15-25% there I want to say and I'm going to be able to go ahead and just go for the roost because this Togekiss does have a whole lot of speed. Now the pace bin in the description is an updated version of this team that I got off of the Smogon forms. So yeah, the original version of this team is in my team, but I've since changed it up and made it more to my liking. So that's why that's why it'll probably be different than the version I'm using in this battle. But yeah, anyways, he does try to go for a Sinister Arrow there, hoping that I would stay in. Or hoping that he would outspeed me as I can just safely go for another Bruce. If I did have Thunder Wave at the time, I guess in theory it could have come in handy. But then that means that my Togekiss would have been at below 50% HP, which really isn't that good for me. So even though I do have Heal Bell during this matchup, Thunder Wave does still kind of come in handy in certain scenarios. Either way though, it's fine as I'm going to be able to switch on out of here directly into my Stormy. There's also the chance that he'll miss the Sacred Fire, so that's going to be really nice if it does happen as he does go for it. He does unfortunately not get the burn again, which if he had burned me, I still would have been able to recover off the damage. So don't think again it was that crucial. As he switches directly into the Latias, I really wished that I had Thunder Wave at the time because I could have probably stayed in here against the Latios and just gone for the Thunder Wave because I want to say I can live a Draco Meteor 
at full HP, but I instead switch directly into my Scizor as he does end up going for the Draco. Now, there is a chance that he may have the Hidden Power Fire on this Latios, but because he is at minus two, I'm pretty positive that he's not going to stay in and go for it and risk not knocking me out, especially because he now knows that I'm a bulky variant with Leftover. So there's a good possibility that he is going to want to switch on out of here as I will be able to take advantage of this and go for the U-turn, gaining me a really nice amount of momentum because what this allows me to do is bring in the mighty threat himself that absolutely destroys Harris's team and that is Nido King. I love shiny Nido King, man. It looks so nice and I can just click Fire Blast here and I get flinched. <laughs> I was I was positive he wouldn't switch into Latios and then he crits me and just <sighs> yeah, that's uh that really sucks because Nido King, like I said, literally 6 0'd him, was easily the biggest threat. Would have got off very important damage on that Cabalion, and then I get flinched and critted. So this is really, really bad. As I switch out of my Starmie into my Toga Kiss. I think he did pull a double here into his Cabalion and I'm really not in a good spot right now as I'm going to be forced to switch out here. I thought he would just get a Brox or maybe go for the Iron Head but he reveals to have the Bolt Switch which because I don't have Nido King I can't switch into so he can just safely go for which I wasn't expecting him to do anyways and now he's able to Bolt Switch into his Latios which I don't think I can take the Draco now. So I'm going to go ahead and switch directly on out of here. And I make a really, really bad misplay. I should have not done this play. Like my brain told me go to Togekiss before going into Scizor just for Hidden Power Fire. But I guess I was still upset because of me losing Nido King. And I just foolishly bring in Scizor and that just, that's another huge thing that cost me. I do still have a slight chance to win this match depending on how things go. Even though I am down 4 to 6, but it's okay. We've got a little bit unlucky. Maybe we can get a little bit of luck in our favor. So I'm going to go for the Air Slash. If I had hit the Fire Blast, this thing would have been gone. But no, now he can get up a Stealth Rocks and that's just really, really annoying. So I'm going to go for the Air Slash again, hoping that I could knock him out here. And I, funny enough, get a high damage roll. But the first Air Slash I went for was a low damage roll. And he lives on what had to be like 2 HP as he's going to Volt Switch into the Decidueye just to fodder it off, I guess. So he could get a free switch into something else. But I did end up going for the Roost just to see what he wanted to do as I will be able to, of course, outspeed this Decidueye. I thought about going for the Nasty Plot, but I don't really think that would have helped me out any just because he can easily bring an Entei and go for a Choice Banded Sacred Fire or even go for a Choice Banded Stone Edge, which he's going to do now. So even if I had Nasty Plowder there, this scenario would have happened regardless. I just would have been at lower HP most likely. So I'm going to be forced out here. If I can get a little bit of justice for my Nido King, that's going to be really nice because we can hopefully dodge the Stone Edge and Rapid Spin. But no, he hits and <laughs> he knocks me out. I think that was a mid to high damage roll. So maybe if it got absolute min damage, I could have lived and then recovered off and hoped that he had missed the next Stone Edge and then maybe gone from there. Uh, but yeah, I bring in my Cabalion here, which I'm pretty sure he is going to switch out so I can go for the Stealth Rocks. As for some reason, he switches into his Togekiss. I'm not really sure why. And then he is Scarfed. I, I, I've not seen a single Scarf Togekiss and that's just really, really annoying. It's okay though because we do have Aerodactyl which can outspeed it even though he is Scarfed. So we can definitely pressure him. But because he got off that air slash damage on my Cabalion, then the Sharpedo most likely wins him the battle at this point. So I bring in Aerodactyl on the air slash and he can just sack off Cabalion because, you know, it did its job. It hacks Nido King and got up Stealth Rocks. So I'm just going to safely Mega Evolve here as he can then just bring in Sharpedo. Uh, most likely protect 
If he brings in Entei, I don't think he knocks me out with an E-Speed, so that's definitely not his play. Uh, he can bring in Latios here in hopes that I missed the Stone Edge, which that is probably what he wanted me to do, just so he could have won with a higher score. Thankfully though, Aerodactyl is not poorly trained like Nidoking, and I'm able to knock out the Latios, but alas, the Sharpedo just comes in here, and he can easily protect. Then after the speed boost, Mega Evolve out speed, KO Aerodactyl, KO Kibalion. And if I had Thunder Wave on Togekiss, in an ideal world, I could have won if he then missed a Stone Edge or a Sacred Fire with Entei and then I Thunder Waved him. Because then I think at that point, I could have won the battle, but I don't have Thunder Wave and I'm not that lucky. So yeah, Sharpedo basically is going to allow Harris to win game six. Actually, no, it was Kibalion that let Harris win game six because of what he did to my Nido King. But hey, that is Pokemon and shit happens. Hacks happens. You can't get upset about that. Didn't throw this battle. Could have won this battle, but alas, Nino King went down. Anyways, good game to my boy Harris. We are moving on to a game number seven, which I will hopefully be able to live record, but I don't want to battle too soon because I want to take a little break just just because we've lost three in a row, and I don't, I really don't want to blow a 3-0 lead, man. Like, that's going to be so annoying. It's going to be so annoying. So I'm really hoping that we can win game seven and just... Yeah, if you guys did enjoy, hammer that like button down below, answer the question of the day. And uh, thank you all for watching, so later everybody. Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken But now I'm living with no more pain Tears are hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real